Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we're gonna share with you what a robust recruitment process could look like. We've taken the example of what we do as talent partner for our clients, but also for ourselves. We have recruited over 1,000 professionals in the last 10 years. This is our best practice that we're very happy to share with you. I hope you're gonna get a number of gold nuggets and we remain available to give you more information if required. So if you think that through, to achieve the desired outcome, you, you need to do some thinking at the very beginning, okay? That's what we call the defined stage, okay? In this phase, you're gonna be brainstorming internally or with a trusted party about what is the ideal candidate for the job you have in mind. What are some of the soft skills? What are some of the hard skills? That's what we call the defined stage. All we do it is we typically, you know, if it's, if it's a new client or a new company, we would um, do a needs assessment phase where we ask numerous questions to help define the role. One of the key deliverables will be the job description. The second step of this process, you know you are clear on who you want to recruit, is to do a search phase, okay? So here, you know, typically a number of companies will post on LinkedIn or paid job boards such as Seek, okay? An example is two or three years ago, when we were posting a job offer on Seek, we would receive up to 700 applications. And that's true also for internship position. Today, we would receive less than 50, and to be honest, they wouldn't be all great. So advertising this job offer is not good enough. You need to think about where does this ideal candidate live? Ask around you, you know, if you're an early stage startup, people who know you can refer you ideal candidates. The third step of that process is around the selection process. So that's really how you're gonna be structuring the interviews to achieve the desired outcome. Or to pick from the top three, five or 10 candidates. And one of my key advice, it has to be a two-way street. People don't just come for money are not just here to sell themselves, they want to know more and more about what, they would, what it would be to work with you, what it would look like to work in your organization. We recently reintroduced a social round as part of the recruitment process, to give you an idea, with one of our uh, key international clients. They've got an amazing company culture, an amazing team. It would be too bad for the candidates not to see that as part of the process. It will also avoid surprise down the track when you know the team need to onboard uh, these new candidates and actually there is something wrong in terms of cultural fit, for example. A number of other things you can do, you know, technical tests, personality tests to assess and, and, and find the right candidates. Very happy to contribute on this and you know find innovative ways for the candidates to get a feel of what it is like to work with your organization, what would some of the KPIs would be if hired in the job. The fourth phase of our process is pretty important. That's the hiring phase. That's actually when you issue the employment agreement or letter of offer to your ideal candidate. There could be some negotiation during this step. Maybe it's received another offer in the meantime. Maybe it's about to receive another offer in the meantime. There are a number of key elements in that employment contract that you don't want to get wrong, including, for example, the duration of the probation period, the remuneration structure, the flexible work arrangement, and so on. If this is the first time you're hiring someone, I would really encourage you to go on the Fair Work website. There are a number of free templates and guidance on what you can do or can't do 
when hiring people. The last step, and probably the most important step of that process, is the onboarding phase. You've now completed the fourth previous step, you know, whatever the time it has taken, you found what you think is the right person for your organization. You want to give them an amazing experience on the onboarding process. An example of the things you can do to impress and welcome your employees and you know if you are into lockdown or this is a remote employee you can still apply that one of our clients send boxes you know with goodies of the companies you know the new laptop on day one to their new employees they've also organized um, video uh, calls with various person in the organization they had a very structured onboarding process that was very productive um, for both the employee and the organization. So seeing that phase through to empower your new recruits and onboard him successfully in your business. Very happy to help. Typically, you know, when you work with company like yourself, the first three months we would help making sure your new employee and also the hiring manager is very happy with their choice. If there is any yellow or red flags, or we could hire on them before the end of the probation period. Thanks for uh, watching this video, focusing on what a robust recruitment process look like. It was a bit of a longer video. I swear the next video is going to be a bit shorter, but hopefully you got some gold nuggets and learn more about what you can do to achieve the desired outcome. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about how um, and who can help you run a successful recruitment process. See you in a second.